Hello, welcome back. So in the previous uh, videos, uh, series of videos related to Cosmos DB, we have seen a lot of uh, details about Cosmos DB. So in this uh, video, we will see the Cosmos DB time to live, which we call it as a TTL. Uh, so if you have not seen the previous videos, I recommend you see the previous uh, videos in, the, in this playlist so that you get a clear understanding of uh, the different concept in uh, concepts in uh, Cosmos DB, Azure Cosmos DB. And also, if you uh, haven't yet subscribed for this channel, uh, please do like and subscribe this, uh, for this channel. And also, don't forget to press bell button for instant uh, notifications. So, let's get started. So, we see uh, Azure Cosmos DB time to live. So, we need to understand why this is needed. I mean, this is a simple concept of time to live. Uh, but it is a very handy and uh, like uh, in, the, in the production uh, use cases, we'll be using it uh, more frequently so that we will see why, right? So why we are using this uh, TTL uh, and what is, I mean, how, how exactly we are using it. So we will see uh, why we are using Cosmos DB TTL and uh, why, why exactly we are using it and how, how exactly can uh, we use it, right? The, those details we will see now. So as we can see, uh, we will see why. Okay, why we are using the TTL concept in Cosmos DB is so it will have automatical automatically delete the older data. So when you have a requirement of deletion of the older data, because in, in the production uh, projects or in the real time projects, so you will have a requirement definitely like uh, you don't keep the data like uh, five years, 10 years old data, you will not keep it right. Uh, even Facebook, Google or Amazon will archive the data which is which is not needed or which is older, right. So that in that way, the automation, uh, automatic deletion of data, older data will uh, we are using uh, uh, time to live. So that is that is a whole and sole reason that we are using this, and it can also enforce the data retention policies. So by doing this uh, point number one, so it will uh, help us enforce the data retention policies because uh, uh, the data, I mean, how much time the data should uh, reside in the system, that is called a data retention policy. So that basically. Uh, will be defined by the TTL. So here we are using TTL, we are uh, defining that. Okay, I mean, we are enforcing that. And by doing so, we will save the cost because uh, as we know, Cosmos DB will uh, basically charge you based on the volume also. Okay, if the volume is too, uh, too huge, the data volume is too huge, then definitely you will be charged more. Uh, and also it improves the performance. How does it improve the performance is uh, if you're having lots, lot of data, like uh, if you're having one year, two year of data in Cosmos DB, when you query that uh, Cosmos DB, uh, right, container, right? So then definitely it has to uh, traverse through all the huge data. So it has to uh, query the huge data, right? So there will be a lot of logical partitions created and physical partitions created because of a lot of uh, huge amount of volume of data. So that will uh, actually avoid, that will be avoided here and it will uh, help improve the performance. So now that we have understood why we are using it, right? So now we will see how we can uh, use, I mean, how we can enable this and what is the technical details of it, right? So how, how we can enable is uh, TTL is simple. Uh, as we see, it is a time to leave. That means, uh, so it will define uh, uh, the time period the data should uh, lie in the Cosmos DB container. Usually we will have uh, defined uh, in, in that in seconds. So if you, are, if you want to store uh, that particular data for say one minute, so then you will define it TTL as a 60 seconds. And also older documents will be uh, identified for deletion based on TTL. So what happens once you define a TTL, right? Cosmos DB will be continuously uh, looking for the older file, older documents. That means older data. So once it identifies the older data, which has crossed this uh, time to leave. Okay. So that means the document is expired. Okay. Then it automatically deletes uh, those documents which are expired. So that user will not be notified or user will not be knowing that uh, this happens in the background. And uh, this definitely will consume the resource units when uh, actually the TTL is running on top of uh, uh, the data and uh, doing the deletion process. Your resource units defined for the Cosmos DB container will be container or at a DB level will be utilized here. So Cosmos DB uh, will identify those uh, and uh, will delete the data when, when the Cosmos DB container is not, not busy or uh, it will choose the time slot to delete and it will delete those documents. And expiry date and time is based on a document insertion to the container, right? So if the document is inserted uh, at uh, 12 a.m., okay, and uh, if the TTL is defined uh, so that uh, it is defined for uh, uh, to leave for one hour, right? So in that case, after one hour, that is uh, like 1 a.m., that uh, document uh, will be deleted, okay? The insertion time is 12 a.m., okay? Based on that insertion time, the TTL uh, 
will be used uh, to actually calculate how many time how much seconds it can leave so if it is in hours it will be like 60 to 60 uh, seconds uh, 60 60 60 time uh, seconds that is around uh, 3600 seconds you can say for one hour so that uh, will be the expiry expiry time so that will be calculated and uh, at 1 am the data will be deleted so now let's uh, jump into a quick demo of what cosmos db ttl so as you can see i am into the cosmos db account and inside cosmos db account i am having the cosmos db uh, cosmos db and there you have a container so this is a, a temporary container i have created for the demo purpose where you can go into the settings and as you can see inside, inside settings you have an option of time to leave so these uh, settings uh, i mean these ttl settings are specific to the container level so there are two two types of ttl setting one is ttl at a container level another one is ttl at a item level so when i say at a container level so that option we are seeing here but ttl at a item level that means each record level we can define a ttl so that can be only done using uh, programmatically using some stored procedure uh, and uh, user defined functions so whatever other options that you have uh, where you need to explicitly code whenever you are doing uh, running a stored procedure there you can mention uh, those uh, item level ttl uh, details okay but uh, if it's uh, if you want to discuss about this container level ttl so when it is off that means uh, the items uh, in this container will never expire by default this is option just select it and when you go for this option like on no default that means when you click on this on no default so this will uh, i mean if you see there is you can get confused i mean uh, so what is the difference between off and on no default or on this on and this on so what is the difference so the main difference is uh, when you go for a container level uh, ttl right so this will this will matter when you're when you're uh, creating i mean when you're giving the no default option here but ttl for item level you are defining uh, as off so in that case like a null in that case the item will never expire but if you're uh, giving the ttl of the item equal to minus one so that uh, item will never expire actually so that those example we will see in the uh, coming uh, slide but uh, so this is more for the uh, ttl at an item level so the this will be only used in, uh, in those kind of uh, rare scenarios where you want to define uh, ttl at con uh, both container level and item level okay so specifically for the item level but otherwise you will you will use either off or on which is simple to understand so when you give on here this will if you see here uh, it is giving a notification that the items in this uh, 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 in this in this particular container will be deleted okay after uh, so and so seconds so this is we are defining in a seconds so we can we can basically uh, give any number of seconds here so if you want to give number of hours you need to convert that into seconds and uh, provide here so after this number of seconds if i'm giving 60 seconds after one minute every record which is inside inserted to this container will be deleted after one minute right if i'm inserting at uh, one uh, one one uh, am so it will be expired by 1 2 am and it will be deleted from the container so hope that is clear and let us have a quick demo here like uh, i'll try to give 20 second as a retention period here i mean the time to leave at a container level so that means any record which is inserted to this container will be deleted within 20 seconds i mean after 20 seconds so now i can see uh, it is updated okay and now I can uh, go ahead and add a new item here. So, so here I'll add a new item. I'll get a new item now, and I can add that item here, right? So as you can see, this should be a valid JSON. So I'm making it as a valid JSON. Yeah. So that now there is no errors. So customer ID uh, is my uh, partition key here in this case. Just I'll click on save. So this item is saved now. So now keep on observing this so i'll just uh, we will ju we'll be just refreshing it so we have an item right but after 20 seconds this item should be deleted automatically because the retention period or the ttl is 20 seconds so let's wait for 20 seconds we'll uh, keep on uh, refreshing as you can see the item is already deleted because the, the 20 second uh, ttl is working here since the item is more uh, living more than 20 seconds it will be deleted on the 21st second itself so hope this is clear uh, let us see the last concept uh, which is i would say not so important but uh, it is good to know okay so 
as we discussed the ttl can be at a container level or at item level okay so the both combination will actually uh, make uh, make sense here like when you are defining at a container level setting null the setting null in the sense you are just keeping it as uh, by default okay which is uh, which is off actually okay so when the container ttl is off then the ttl at item level is also off so then definitely the ttl is disabled okay whatever the case uh, if the container level is off you cannot delete the item level whether whatever option you choose for the item level so this item level will be defined only programmatically as we mentioned but we only see in the, in the demo this ttl at the container level so the second option when you choose uh, container container level, container level ttl uh, on right this is on so when you do on and uh, you define ttl as null so then may, that means ttl is enabled for that item but uh, the, uh, the item will never expire and if it is minus 1 okay ttl for the item is minus 1 then it will be deleted it will never expire basically and if it is 2000 that means it will be it will be expiring after uh, 200 uh, second 200 second and the last option when uh, you are choosing on ttl is on okay so uh, in this case as well the main uh, important point to note here is uh, ttl at a container level can be overridden by the ttl at item level here so this is very important point you can see like uh, here we are defining 2000 right so but at a container level it is 1000 uh, but uh, since we have defined 2000 at item level the item will be only deleted after 28 second because it is overriding the ttl of the container so this is a, con a concept a detailed concept of cosmos db ttl so hope this was useful thanks for watching